Welcome once again to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. First major conversation this morning is a talk in politics once again, and the discussion is mostly about uh, the build-up to 2023's general elections. Uh, the, of course, uh, conversations across the country are who eventually takes over power um, or retains uh, office in 2023. The opposition parties, of course, have started their own plotting and started their own calculations and permutations. And that, of course, includes the major opposition party, the People's Democratic Party, and the smaller ones across the country. There's also likely going to be, you know, um, uh, independent candidates, you know, who show up every now and then. Uh, but the question really is, with the People's Democratic Party, have they done well enough to convince Nigerians that they are an option? And that's, you know, most of the conversation we're having this morning with uh, Mr. Punabo Inkotaria, who's a former advisor to the River State Government. Uh, Mr. Inkotaria, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Good morning, Osara. Good morning, Messi. Good morning, Nigeria. Good to have you on the program. Uh, so, so let's start with your response to that question. Uh, do you think that the PDP has done enough, worked hard enough, has placed and positioned itself well enough as an opposition party? Or have they simply just existed in, in the last seven years? Well, the PDP as an opposition party has performed abysmally. Just as the APC, the party in government, has also performed abysmally. In the last um, close to about seven years now, six, six years plus, I think the PDP lost its bearing in its role as an opposition party when compared to what the APC did as an opposition party preceding the 2015 general election. And I think that is because the PDP also lacks the understanding of what it means to be in opposition. And so, yeah, there are uh, staccato attacks as once in a while, and most times the attacks are not. Uh, uh, attacks that are not, uh, in most cases, issue-based. When you talk of opposition party, you're talking of a shadow government, like you have in the United Kingdom, where you have, for example, you have the Minister for Petroleum, you also have, um, in the opposition, the Minister for Petroleum, shadow Minister for Petroleum, that will take on every issue that has to do with petroleum in the country. And that's what you mean by opposition. But I think we have a worse understanding of what opposition is in this country. And you find out that most of those in the position of those in government attack personalities rather than addressing issues. And that is because of the caliber of people that have accidentally, they have been accidentally discharged on the political topic. They lack. For example, now, if I say OSAC's program on, um, on uh, let's say, uh, the economy or whatever, it's not good. Rather than Osa addressing it, Osa was saying, yes, you do. for money. I refuse to give it. That is why he's criticizing me. Yes. It is, go and ask Osa, what happened? What slanted interpretation of what opposition is all about? The opposition has nothing to do with the individual. You have dress issues. And to that extent, the PDP has failed movement. The APC too, no doubt, yes, they address uh, they attack individuals, but they also address issues. And you could see how efficacious it was, and that was why they won. Let me preliminary state here, I've always said it. I'm not a member of the PDP. I was a member, but I'm not a member of the PDP. I ceased to be a member of the PDP in 2016, and I have never, ever been a member of the APC. Never, ever. So when I speak, is based on conviction and based on my assessment. So in synopsis, the issue of opposition in this part of the world, in the understanding, I think, uh, is misplaced. Because rather than address issues in this part of the world, they, are, they attack individuals. And that is not what we call opposition. Nevertheless, whether in the case of attacking the individuals or addressing the issues, the PDP has still woeful. So, so now let's begin to look at all of that because, however, um, it's also believed that political opposition parties have a role uh, to play in any, in any democracy as a matter of fact, they are a component of 
uh, democracy. So what could be the reason why the PDP, like you have mentioned, have not lived up to expectation? Now, some people are arguing that uh, it's because of the lack of ideology of political parties. But what did the APC do differently in 2011 and 2015? I mean, we saw the president protesting against, uh, you know, the failed subsidy removal, including the pump prize. He had its political engineers and supporters at the time on the streets. And we saw that political campaigns from the APC at that time uh, that smeared, you know, the activities or the, the, some of the policies of the People's Democratic Party. So could it be that uh, the lack of ideology by political parties, the reason why uh, the, uh, that's the PDP has not performed very well in terms of the role of an opposition in this, the, you know, current dispensation? Well, well, when you talk of lack of ideology, there, it could have a nexus, but I don't think that is the main reason because the uh, uh, political parties in this country have no, they don't have ideology. They are all bereft of ideology. When you talk of ideology, you cannot have a, an APC member cross carpet into the, the PDP or a PDP member cross carpet into the APC. It all has to do with egocentric ambition. Not necessary. If anybody tells you he's going in, into office, for is going to be there in the image of Nigerians. Don't be deluded, my dear sister. I mean, that, that is a far cry for me. A lot of politicians go in there to feather or line their pockets, not in the image of Nigerians. So it has not, I want to, when you talk about ideology, you have majority of the APC members today, we are members of the PDP and the defunct ATN and AFP. Majority of them. And the CPC. It, Different parties melded to form the APC. Basically, to wrest power from the PDP that they felt had enough clout to resist the new position. So it really has nothing to do with ideology. It has to do with one, ambition, and two, egocentric reasons. Not ideology. When you talk ideology, you're talking of a party's a uh, standpoint on issues. You are talking of a party that believes that it is going to represent the people. Then you talk of ideology. But in Nigeria, and I can tell you, and I stand to be contradicted, no party has an ideology. Because if you say the parties have an ideology, then the party members are depressed that are cross-cutting from one party to the other, are depressed. So no party has an ideology. And that is why I, I am averse to the Supreme Court judgment that said you vote for a party and not an individual. In Nigeria, we vote for individuals and not parties. Because the loyalty of persons are not to the party, but to the individual, not even to the constitution of the country. Not even to the constitution. So we vote. If, for example, and I will tell you I'm also guilty of that, I, because I know we don't have ideologies, I don't vote for parties, I vote for individuals. If a candidate emerges in any political party, and I believe as what it takes to deliver Nigeria, to lead us to the promised land. I will vote for that candidate, notwithstanding his political affiliation. And I can tell you that. That is the truth about most Nigerians, 95% of Nigerians, if not 100%. And as I said, my godfather, my organ said, anywhere I go, I will follow. We are all aware of this. We are seeing of this. Yeah, if the uh, principal said he's going to defend from APC to PDP, if he's not giving the ticket. And if he's not giving the ticket, and he's different. We we'll won't go now. Wherever he goes, I'll go. That is what he here. Nobody has told you. I believe in the ideology of this political party. Therefore, I must speak. Nobody in this country. So nobody should talk of ideology. Even when we criticize, in most cases, we criticize for parochial reasons. This man has refused to give me contract. This man is against my master. This man does not belong to my political party. And so we have to criticize him. We have to castigate him. That is what is going on in this country. Not ideology. Please, it's not like a little base. So we should not deceive ourselves talking of ideology. Well, uh, well I, I, I want to you know, focus a little bit more on what you know, the PDP could have done. Um, every now and then you see a statement, press statement from uh, Kola Lubodion. Um, uh, you know, of the course. Former, the former national police secretary. Yeah, exactly. You know, sharing his thoughts on, you know, as well, representing the party and speaking on behalf of the party, you know, and condemning actions of the APC in one, you know, direction or the other. 
Do you think that is enough, you know, as an opposition party? Or, or what more would you have expected that they should be able to do? Um, I'll also quickly mention, in the last uh, 48 hours, the, the conversation on social media has been large, mostly because of the on banning of uh, Twitter in Nigeria by the current administration. Um, but there's also something that has been noticed. There's a lot of fake accounts that were also opened, loads of them, of course, uh, seeming to be uh, set up, you know, to support or to push out the narratives from the current administration. Um, that is some work that the current administration is doing. And if you remember also in the build to the elections in 2014, 2015, they also had a lot of uh, social media engineering. They sponsored, you know, persons, you know, to handle propaganda. They sponsored a lot of people to handle whatever narrative um, that they wanted to push out across social media. Um, and those are some of the things that helped them also. So once again, is or are statements from the PDP press statements from the PDP enough as an opposition party? Do they not understand what it means and the, the amount of work that needs to be done in order to fill the hearts and minds of Nigerians and let them know that they are still alive? Well, talking about press statements, um, first let us uh, uh, contextualize it. The PDP government of good luck in Venezuela was one government that was uh, quite humane when compared to that of General Muhammad Bukhari, who is draconian in nature. And so the PDP government accepted criticisms and was phlegmatic about those criticisms. It treated them with equanimity. It really never sent the uh, security operatives after those that criticized. And that's why the likes of uh, General Buhari and Co. were able to stage a walk, a protest. And they did that without any interference. But we have a government in office that is impervious to criticism, that cannot boom criticism, especially with new tenants, uh, uh, such as uh, uh, the Minister for, for Information, Limo, who has ruined his reputation within these six years in office. It is a disgrace to Nigeria and to Nigerians. I can say that. But it's apology to Plus TV because it's, a, it's an international station and certain things are not supposed to be said on air. But I repeat, like Mohammed is a disgrace to Nigeria and to, to the country, to Nigeria as, as, as a whole. Having said this, the PDP is also being cautious. I believe. Probably they saw what happened to. Um, what was this man who was uh, jailed? And uh, you were the former uh, uh, this man's predecessor, who was also the former National Publicity Secretary. I forgot his name from the East. Olisa Metu. I forgot his name, yes. Olisa Metu and Co. So, but I can tell you his successor, the, the guy from the West, whose name he just mentioned, performed creditably. But I think they are eliminated. They were a little bit scared because most of them didn't want a situation where. They will be arrested and detained. I don't said this. I don't think anything should stop as a deterrent if you're in the opposition. And if you're in the opposition and you're doing what is in sync with the thinking of Nigeria, they'll rise to your rescue. They'll come to your support. I think, I saw, that's why I said the PDP actually did not do much when compared to what the APC did while in opposition. Then if you talk of but, just press but, and so uh, no, Mr. Inkotaria, yeah. so I just want to chip this in. Yeah. Did they not do much because they are a party that functions differently from the way the APC functions? They're a party that maybe understands the rule of law, understands the constitution, and understands rights and some of all those things. Um, very different from the way that the APC functions. Is that, a, is that possibly why... They didn't take the same routes that the APC took in 2014, 2015. I don't think, I don't think, I don't think. The next man that will probably appear on your, on your program will definitely want to do that because uh, you've just given him food for thought. He's going to tell you he's doing, he's doing what they are doing because they respect the Constitution. I do this. What is the rule of law? What do you mean by the Constitution? Protest is constitutionally allowed. Yeah. You don't even need the premise of anybody. You just need to inform the police for protection. 
This is the Supreme Court judgment. So what are we talking about? The PDP, the truth about it is that the PDP in terms of opposition, I say, fail woefully. And I don't know if it's as a result of lack of ideas, or if it's a function of fear, or what have you. I sincerely do, because the ABC came all out. Well, like I said, probably because they are afraid that the man at the end of affairs today is somebody that will not brook any form of criticism. And I told you saw it. Any form of dissent, you know, this is a government that sees dangerous enemies in the greatest shadow and disciples in the shadow of behind every dissenting wall. So I believe the PDP members are cautious. All of the Jonathan's administration, I can give that to Jonathan. Jonathan was a Democrat. This is a dictator. I mean, I'm not going to miss what about that. For a man to have said that why would the court admit um, this former Dasuki to bail? Because after the admission to bail, he was, he was not released. And then he was asked, he said, why would they admit you to bail when the man is guilty? That is a dictator. He thought he was, he was in 1984, 1985, 1984. So, Paul, he was just being cautious. And we also have seen, under this federal administration, we had a sentence, sentence of justice due peacefully and is still blowing peacefully. In other words, if Mr. A steals foul, let him go to jail. If Mr. B steals cow, one is foul, the other is cow. Mr. B steals cow, let him not go to jail. What's the scenario? It uh, initiates legal proceedings and matters are done since so that. That is what you see in this government. So, if they can keep in their position, justice, which is wrong. But nevertheless, whatever the case is, that's why you have the opposition. For you to be in your position, you should be prepared for everything that will come your way. The PDP is scared of what will come its way. And that is why it failed as an opposition party. So, so what, because he asks, what do you think that they failed at doing? I mean, the People's Democratic Party, like you have mentioned. I tell you this, I tell you this, I tell you, for example, now I tell you this. Um, under the good luck of the United administration, we saw protests. I can tell you, you wake up in the morning, the social media, the air was so with all kinds of stories. The truth, lies, all kinds of stories. In the present administration, they react. In a uh, good luck, I feel like Jonathan administration, so they, they react. This was they are reacting. In the present, you don't react. You don't react. Because it's proactive. And that is a major difference. They come up with a policy, you say, oh, uh, this policy, and most times, even in the analysis of the policies, you find out that you see some sort of bias. Don't give an impression that you're biased. The APC has of the magnitude of the Philippines government and accentuated it. That was what the APC did. They accentuated it. Even though they knew that it was impossible to achieve those tasks, they came up with the promises. They talked of, for example, the poor subsidy. They have admitted. But they, they criticized the issue of subsidy when Jonathan muted that idea of subsidy. It was criticized. And because Nigerians, realizing the effect the subsidy was going to have on them, agreed with the APC. Propaganda. Today, the same government is even worse than the general government. But it has to do with how you handle your media, how you handle perception. That is what the PDP lacks. Lime Wale did a good job in the position, but has done terribly bad in government. That is basically it. You see, it has to do with the message. They say, I give and they say, every word is in the word basket. It is up to you to choose the right word in order to communicate effective. What is effective communication? Generated meaning over the perceived meaning must be equal to one. That is it. And that was exactly what the NPC did. What the Philippines is doing, they are not communicating effectively. Of course, that was not led to the housing of the former national uh, chairman of the party, which is Secondus. They were not communicating effectively. They were not giving vision out to Nigeria what Nigerians wanted to hear. 
Okay. If we just have a one system government, a one uh, uh, party system in, in, in this country, the PDP failed. But the NPC exploited. They understood what the uh, it, it, uh, opposition meant and exploited it. Okay, so, so let's also, um, you know, get to the opposition and their representation at the legislative level. Now, you also want to agree with me that there's been a lot of outcry that the Ninth Assembly is a rubber stamp. I'd like to share your thoughts on, you know, the, uh, the performance. How would you rate the performance of the People's Democratic Party at the, you know, lawmaking level? The PDP or, or APC, the President National Assembly or PDP National Assembly? I'm talking about the PDP now. When Sarafi was in office? No, no, no. We're talking about, you know, the, at the lawmaking level now, their representation, the opposition at the representation, I mean, legislative. Well, you, have, you, you, have, you, have, you have few persons that you can give credit to. Just a few of them, a handful of them. A handful of them. How many people do you see with on the floor? I mean, most of them just see this as an opportunity to uh, traverse the world to globe up. How many do you see on the floor? How many? That's the question. How many times? Just a few of them, like a Baribé, you have uh, just a, a handful, just a handful. All like when the APC was in opposition, they made sure that the gay Sharaki is top. Even though he was one of them. But PDP members, how many on the floor? It is when they have a national issue and they have decided in a meeting, which is wrong, in a meeting, to say, no, we are going to oppose this. Then you see the majority on the floor of the house coming out to say, this, staging a walkout. But the issues on day to day basis, parliamentary uh, uh, proceedings, how many do you find on the floor of the house? How many? All right. Um, Mr. Ngotara, uh, we are, of course, uh, taking the so steps. So, this is not a performance. They have equally failed. They have equally failed. Even our, let me tell you the truth, I have never, ever, ever liked our parliamentarians. Because most of them are just holidaying. They take our money, do trust, and ignore. I believe you, really, I don't know your, your, your senator, your House of Rep member, but I believe you hardly see him on the floor. Of the house. That's the truth. And so there's an agreement. Let us go and oppose this particular issue. Then you see them in their number. After that, boom, it's finished. That's the end of it. That's the end of it. That's what we face. Um. Mr. Ingotara, as we uh, take steps closer to the 2023 elections, um, is it, it, does it feel in any way like the PDP is simply um, expecting Nigerians to, out of disappointment, in the APC, vote them in? Or do you think that they have worked hard enough, or they are working hard enough to convince Nigerians that they are a better option? As an opposition Ask a rhetorical question. Ask a rhetorical question. What's the difference between APC and PDP? There's no difference. Oh, they have some, there's you know, difference in their, in their party, manifesto, no, party manifestos there and is ideologies. No the only distinction is in the nomenclature. No difference. Tell me, those populating the APC today, they defected from where? Those in the PDP today, they defected from where? What's the difference? I mean, so to be fair, Ms. Angotara. Yeah, to, to be fair. Hello, sir, oh, sir. Yeah, go oh, ahead. It has to do with individuals and not the party. If APC will get the, will, will not, not the ticket, of course, they have the president. If they just win the election, it has to do with the individual. If today, Mr. A emerges as the APC presidential candidate, I will tell you that a lot of PDP members who are loyal and close to that Mr. A will vote for Mr. A openly or secretly. They will play anti -party. That's the truth about it. So it has, it has nothing to do with an individual, with the party. It has to do with an individual. Let us not deceive ourselves. Today, we are here failing. 
No, no, he has failed and failed work. The only area I can commend him is, is the area of railway. I commend him. He's done well there. But generally, 90% failure is performed at this moment. Now, if another candidate comes up to say, and this man is appealing to Nigerians, Notwithstanding that Guare has failed, they'll vote for him, even if he belongs to the ABC. I tell you, you'll be shocked. Okay. They'll vote for that same candidate. Yeah, it depends on the individual, yeah. not the party. Not the party. So, why then do we have you know, the dominance of uh, the APC and the PDP? Because now in the 2023 elections is, will be here in no time, and you will also have uh, different political parties. I mean, putting out your candidate out there and contesting this election. And so when it comes to the role of the opposition, should we be limited, you know, to a particular party like the People's Democratic Party? No, that's not all. That's what I'm saying. We have smart interpretation of what opposition means. And again, you know, in this part of the world, you are branded immediately once you criticize the government as being a member of the position. Like I can tell other person, I don't know this criticizing people, I think he's not a member of the position. You are branded. Because we have, uh, it, it's like the least laws and servants. You dare not criticize the government in power. Anyone that resigned as special advisor, I tell you, I was almost condemned. No matter what happens, remain you must think back ever. That's the worst understanding. That's the problem we have. And then the same person that are in positions of authority. You cannot bequeath what you don't have. So if you are just sister, it really has nothing. It has to do with if you're your loyal to me or you're not loyal to or you're an enemy. And so this out of position package, you have a lot of them. Now, opposition in this part of the world means enemy. Whereas in civilized class, it means somebody that is trying to correct the ills of the government in office. But here, yeah, you become your branded an enemy. And even a member of the ruling party will not want to be seen with a member that has uh, somebody that just criticized the government in power. That is how bad it is. So it is opposition generally. We have persons that have been talking. But in Nigeria, opposition is limited to the party. That's why you keep talking about opposition party, opposition party, opposition party. It's limited to the party. Otherwise, you have a lot of people opposing. Today, I can criticize Buari's program on a particular issue. And also commend his program on another. Like I said, in any way, he has performed credibly well. And by the Minister of Transportation, right on the road to meeting we are meeting. This Nigerians command. Everybody has said it. So I can, but the economy he has performed badly. I can criticize the Buhari's government on an issue and commend it on another issue. But here the belief about the opposition is that once you criticize, you belong to opposition, and even those in the opposition believe that you must not say anything good in a particular government. So there is this wide, slanted interpretation of what opposition means in this country. Otherwise, people have been opposed. People have said that Shara has been talking. People, people have been talking. I have been talking. Is that not opposition? But because it is not coming directly from the PDP, oh, the motion has failed. Lie to me. That does not mean that the opposition has failed. Because you still have dissenting voices criticizing the government in power. But when it's not opposition, people talk of PDP, PDP, PDP. You know, Opposition simply means I oppose the policy. I oppose the definition of opposition. It doesn't mean today that I oppose what I will not comment. Yeah. All right, Mr. Inkutare, yeah. um, if you, of course, were going to be sharing ideas on how the opposition generally, not just the PDP now, can, uh, you know, become more vocal or, you know, take, you know, bigger steps. Uh, towards, uh, you know, finding a way to get themselves into power in 2023. And I'm talking regardless of the pol political party now. Um, what more would you have, uh, would you ask that they do? 
Sorry, are you, when you say opposition, you are saying... Are you limiting it, restricting it to PDP or not just the PDP? You know, opposition in, in in Nigeria. Anybody who might be interested in that position. Okay, very good. Now I will enjoy Nigeria, notwithstanding the political party to vote for an individual. That is my honest advice to Nigerians. Notwithstanding, look at it. For presidency, I can vote for a man on APC platform. I forgot to ask I vote for a man of PDP platform or my grasser. Every labor also, it's an individual. I don't give a damn about the fact. Because the man you vote for will determine the economy and your future. Not the fact. What if you come up with one non entity as your candidate, as your strong buyer? So if you build up a coach as you vote for a coach. Definitely a coach if I do that. I will not do that. And I can't go to that, I'm not a member of any political party. So I'm free to cast my vote. But, but that hasn't really... But, but, that, is is but that hasn't really... Sorry. That hasn't really been, you know, very fantastic for some people. Because, that's right, that's right. because, because some people, that's right. some people that's right. actually in 2015 voted an individual, and we're talking about President Muhammad Buhari, but there's no way you're going to separate the individual as much as they can be very fantastic from the party element, because already you know that political parties come together, you know, as an instrument to contest power and control it. So there would always be an influence, you know, and the ideology of the parties being reflected. Excuse me, excuse me. Mercy, mercy, I dissent. You just raised the salient point. In 2015, a lot of people voted for APC because of who? Who are Although it was misplaced judgment. But they voted because of who? Who are Taking Buare of today was Buare of 84, 85. That was what we voted for. Not necessarily the APC. And that is the truth about it. But unfortunately, it failed us. We are not hard to know. We have God. We don't have the key to clear for it. To say, this is what this man is going to do. He devoted for him based on his antecedents. He told Nigeria. Recently, he said because he was too old. Or he's too old. That's what he said. I don't know if uh, uh, age really has a factor. Because we have been lying, uh, uh, biting over there. We have drunk over there, and so on. But nevertheless, you just bust that my session when you said you voted for Buhari. The cost of Buhari. That's the point I'm making. Yes, it was done in error. But that does not mean that because they mistakenly voted for Buhari, therefore, their next choice, they must have learned from their mistakes. What is one of the party? I just ask you a question. What if you have thieves and robbers, no criminals? Imagine a candidate, which happens in this country. Even at the National Assembly, we have people of personal character, a retired DID, who was a senator, under a passenger, said he will stay the day to see those criminals, those still answering questions, uh, criminal questions, in the National Assembly. And they said he has to make sure he has to have his signal. They said, if you don't have he said, there's no problem. Tomorrow I'll come up with the list. What happened? They dead him. The same of what did he say? He said, the National Assembly is full of criminals. They said, I'll come up with the list. They dead him. If I know those criminals, you don't vote for them because they belong to my political party. Don't talk to it. I will never do that. That's the point I'm making. I still, I still think that I, I still think that voting an individual. Non criminal. I, I still think that if I have a non criminal, one minute. If I have a non criminal as a member of my political party, and I also have another person with clear record as a member of another political party contesting for the same position, even if you are still of anti party, I will vote for that person. That's the truth about. It. I agree with that. There no party loyalty. That's where I say I disagree completely with this of party loyalty. As far as I'm concerned, it depends on the individual that is the measure, not the party. Okay. And then the party comes up with a credible individual. Fine. Uh -huh. right. But if you want to a criminal on the party and decide to vote for that criminal, I will not.
But we are all, we are all witnesses now. We are all, we are all victims of what has happened to placing uh, people criminals in positions of that. We are all witnesses. I will not suffer any today. Absolutely. I will not suffer any today. So oh. let us go beyond that. That's the first thing I said. I am appealing to Nigerians. I'm besieging Nigerians. I'm appealing to them. Now let us go beyond this issue of to the individual. After all, that is murder because they felt Buhari was a credible candidate. We can still do that. That is going together. To bring up Buhari, he tried to make that he failed. They came together to ensure his victory. We can still do that. If Mr. A doesn't have the part, we can support him to a man. Because at the end of the day, we stand up and the future of victims of his leaders. That's the point I'm making. That's why I'm appealing to Nigerians at this point. All right. Opunabo Inkotarian. Always interesting speaking with you. Uh, thank you very much for joining us this morning. And we wish you a very beautiful day ahead and a great weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Absolutely. All right. Away from politics. Uh, we're going to move away from politics and go to sports. Wally Scott will be joining us after the short break uh, to talk about AFCON. It seems that there is some controversy that has been brewing since it started. We'll talk about it when we get back.